Okay, girls, so every festival we do an English night. Right. And every festival, until I think last year, we did a girls stand-up comedian night. Mm -hmm. And then last year, when I interviewed the women comedians, they mostly said, oh, we wish a time would come when we would just be considered comedians, yep. where there wouldn't have to be a special night Mm -hmm. emphasizing that it's female stand-up that they're watching. So I've kind of suggested that we should stop with the girls' night. Yeah. And this is what happened. Yeah. <laughs> they swapped it the English yeah. night for the girls' night. I yeah. think they make a really good point, though, in the sense that as much as it, there are really kind intentions to running all women comedy nights, it, it, it enforces an idea that I think is 100% wrong, which is that sort of female comedy is a genre, and it's not. We're just people talking about our lives in the same way. It enforces as, as if, you know, that men might not be welcome and the topics are all going to be women women stuff. Like, it's just not how it is anymore. Everybody's talking about their lives and everybody's lives are as interesting as everybody else's. It's, we don't talk about things that aren't interesting to men and men don't talk things... Like, it's 2023. Uh, hopefully. It's not to say things are still all completely fair for women in comedy, but... And we can only speak to our experience of the UK. But yeah, I think they made a really interesting and good point about not needing their own niche night, which kind of perpetuates the idea that they're doing something different to, mm. to uh, any other comedian. Yeah, and also, I completely agree. And But also it's like, so then what we get one night and then what all the other nights we don't get to play. That's the problem. It's like, it's like, oh, we're doing this special thing. We're highlighting you, but it's like, no, you're not. You're actually just discriminating against us the rest of the time, you know? So we don't want our own special night. We just want to be fairly represented on every lineup. Well, to be fair, there were nights where we had female and male comedians. Mm -hmm. What I've noticed though, that when a, the same comedian, female comedian, came uh, to have a gig with the guys, her material would be different from the ladies' night. Oh. Apparently, I mean, it may be just that I thought so, but I really think that on the girls' night, um, the topics were more about, um, I'm a woman, you know, yes. my boobs are low, sorry, you know, but, you know. Yeah, this is another, this is another problem is that, like, if you do separate it as though it's a genre of comedy, then, yeah, it's assumed that you, that is the thing that you will be talking about. And it's not just in terms of gender, that can happen in terms of race, sexuality. As soon as you start going, oh, you're, it's like, then you think, oh, are people just gonna come because they only wanna hear about women's stuff? It's like, no, we have the same breadth of experience and things to talk about as everybody. And yeah, that there, there can, f yeah, you don't wanna feel that pressure to have to talk about being a woman because it's boring. <laughs> well, it's not boring, but you know, like we have lots of other stuff to talk about. You shouldn't, it's, it's a very limiting thing to say, because you're a woman, that's the only thing that's interesting about you. We only want to hear about you in terms of that part of your identity, you know? Yeah, because mostly it was like, oh, I'm a woman, I'm fat, nobody wants to date me. I, mean, I, do, I do do that stuff. <laughs> I do that stuff too, but I have lots of other stuff, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do reviews, as I told you. And uh, I get into how a performer does the material. Obviously, there are some stand-up comedians who have everything prepared, very fixed material, uh, are afraid to interact with uh, the audience in the sense that things might get out of hand and they cannot handle it. There are some comedians who exclusively build their shows on the interaction and just go on roasting everybody. Mm -hmm. um, what I found, well, I'll, I'll put the thesis out and you tell me if I'm right or wrong. Um, the British comedy, in my experience, um, is very up to date. Oh. 
Yeah, like <laughs> both of you talked quite a lot about the last two days that you were here. Mm -hmm. And to some who like everything fixed, that would be like, oh, it's untested material. I haven't talked about it 50 times already. Wow. But then I've also noticed that you incorporate what happened in the last two days, meaning that that's when you were in Slovenia, mm -hmm. into the material that you have ready. Yeah, I think, do you know what? Each to their own stylistically, you're going to have people who are more scripted, people who thrive on the thrill of improvising always, and those people often make brilliant MCs to go on in between the acts. There's room for all of these styles in comedy, um, but I can only, I suppose, speak to my own experience. You, you, we both have quite a lot of experience, Rose and I, and I would say in my early years, I would have been terrified yeah. to talk to the audience. I would have, I would have done it, but it would have been tense, frenetic, you know, you're the f f nervous. Um, and actually, with experience, you learn from my, I believe comedy is better if it's in the moment and you're present in your body and in yourself. And stand-up is so different to acting. And one of the many things that makes it different is that it is present in the space and time. You know, if somebody, if somebody interrupts it, even by accident with, by having, you know, Oh, a big coughing fit or something. If you, if you don't acknowledge it, and you don't need to go, you don't need to be horrible to them. I don't mean roasting them. Um, neither of us are that sort of comedian, actually. But it's, um, I think it's really important to be really, really present. And it's a sign that you have overcome your nerves and that you are confident. And it also shows the audience that you're confident. But also, Rose and I, ha tonight's a big gamble. We were nervous because we don't know if any of our cultural references are going to land. We don't know if our style of comedy is going to be the same. We're, this is a completely different culture. And humour is a really unique thing from, from town to town, let alone from country to country. So um, the least we can do is take... We didn't like go around like comedians taking notes about our experience over the last few days, you know, go, well, let's try this because something funny might happen. <laughs> like, I think there are people who do that, yeah. but we, instead, we just enjoyed each other, telling each other, laughing about what was happening to us. It was a gift that we had this time up the mountain that we yeah. both coped kind of terribly with. <laughs> like, we, but, but we were like, well, we both can talk about that, you know, and, and it's, it means you care about where you are, you've done your research, you've tried to make it relatable to the people that you're doing comedy for. And I think if you are being paid to come to another country and have an adventure like that, this, that's the least you can do. Mm. I think you to come here with a script so unshakable that you couldn't incorporate some of your experience you know, in, in the three days, two days you get here before of this country, that it's almost lazy, I'd say. Uh, yeah, I would say for me as well, in a strange way, talking about something which is directly relatable to the people in the gig, even if it's untested, feels weirdly safer yeah. as an opening than written material that could fail because if you if you speak about your experience about the place you know these are not um these are quite familiar comic kind of tropes that you can you can use but if you if you kind of it feels almost like an icebreaker to me i i always think that like i'm not coming out there and immediately being like bang 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 i want you to laugh i want you to like bang 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 here i am here are my jokes because well that's not my style of comedy i'm much more i think of a, like a kind of storyteller confessional you know, I want the audience to feel relaxed. I want them to just feel like, oh, here she is. She's just going to... And I also, like Jess said, we're experienced. I also... It's untested. But I have confidence in myself that, like, I can, like, be funny. I, I know that I can, like... Even if it's not going to get a huge laugh, I know that I can say something in an entertaining way or in the structure of... The vague structure of a joke and be like, you know, here's a funny thing. Yeah, and like I said, just just actually to me, starting that way tonight, yeah, it felt safer than going in with written material. That, that Then it's like, if that doesn't get a laugh, what are you going to do? Straight away, they've lost confidence in you, and you have to just plow on, and you don't have any room to kind of improvise around that. It's That's, for me, is scary. And I think that's, when I was a new comedian, 
yeah, like Jess said, when you're less experienced, you're too scared to kind of take that risk. But I think as you get experienced, you get more confident. You realise actually, yeah, it feels it feels scary, but weirdly not scary. Does that make sense? Actually, it does. I'm going to tell you a personal story now. Okay. Because I really, like, during your performances, I really, really needed to share this story with you. Mm. You're both old enough to probably remember couchsurfing. It's still, couchsurfing. Yeah, yeah, it's still around, but it's not as popular as it used to be. Well, I, I was in my 20s, and I've hosted a couple, I think, from Portugal. And obviously, I took them up. It's not a mountain, it's a hill. <laughs> okay. Pohoria. Pohoria is not you a mountain. You it's not a mountain. You're no. crazy. <laughs> it's this actually is not, it's is... actually defined as a hill. <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway, I took my guests, like David, to Q today. He didn't come with us. I don't think he's ever even been up it. He said he has, but I don't think he's been up it. Oh, the times, bastard! It, it, yeah. He sent us on our because own. Because I own had, I, I mean, I had the courtesy to go Thanks. with, yeah. To be honest, did you wait for, did me, you wait for them? <laughs> did you wait for them at the top? To be honest, for me, it would have been worse if he'd have come. Yeah. I didn't want anybody to witness that. <laughs> I didn't want any witnesses. Whenever anyone walked past me, I was like, don't look at me! <laughs> I'm really tempted <laughs> not to tell you. Please tell me. I only got halfway up. I was purple. <laughs> yes. Really? Yes. <sighs> The Portuguese little goats were like, Tanya, are you right? Tanya, are you right? We'll wait for you at the top. I was like, I'm not fucking going to the top. You was know? It like, um, Just go up and meet me halfway. I hopefully I'll still be alive. You, oh, we go so there to really ski. Deep. I love to go there to oh, ski. I love to ski down it. That's yeah, different. yeah. <laughs> Cable up, yeah, skis down. Ski down. But what you really, really need to understand, because I have this feeling that is going to like influence your self-esteem, yeah. the people who go there, yeah. some people go there, up there three times a day. They're always the same people. The 90-year-old that you met, yeah, yeah. he's been doing that every since he day. was 17 yeah. every day. So it's we don't all How do it. Got time for that? Who's got time for three well, of those going, a day? In fairness, they were going a lot quicker than they us. <laughs> Well, in 1991, we have separated from Yugoslavia and there were huge, um, how is it called, they, they've ruined our infrastructure, not like war-like, war but after that, um, big companies would come and would eat our companies, they would drain them out and there was huge unemployment. Right. So thank God for Pohoria yeah. and alcohol. We have planned, you know. <laughs> um, Some so people decided to to drink a lot. Other people decided to go up and down yeah. the mountain. Right. That's amazing. Uh, and they do. You did. It was comedy aside strikingly beautiful yeah. and every time we stopped I made some videos and you can hear birds singing and crickets and me going <laughs> <laughs> but also lots of lovely nature and also you should feel better because we got halfway up and we were so close we were 50 50 shall we shall we just go back down but we just were like, we've come this far, we exactly. can't stop. And plus, everyone exactly. kept telling us it was 20 exactly. minutes, and it was women, not 20 minutes. The first two women who lied that it was 20 minutes are the reason we made it to the top. Yeah. Because after that, we were like, oh, well, surely it's close. And once you start thinking beyond the next bend, it's the end. Even the very last person who said 20 minutes, that was no. rubbish. Yeah. It wasn't. Because the, last, the last part is really steep, it's and I remember I had like a, a summer camp for kids a few years ago and I said okay so I'll go because we were on the we had the language uh, the summer camp language summer camp on top I said I'm going to go down with you but I'm coming up with a cable yeah. and as I walked down my hernia oh my popped gosh. out oh. so I, I, I don't even walk down this hill oh, anymore yeah. I mean, I'll ski now. <laughs> yeah, in fairness, when, uh, we, when uh, we got to the top, we realised we could have got the cable car up and walked no, down. Yeah, we didn't think about We it. chose it the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> but I was yeah. saying, as we were passing people, I was saying, 
you're doing this the right way around, but they didn't understand me. <laughs> so, yeah, um, we also get less and less snow, which is disappointing, really because you've mentioned the beautiful nature, and one of my favorite things used to be waking up in the morning, going skiing, and seeing a mother deer with a little Bambi by the track, and yeah. so that was really lovely. Now we go mushroom picking. Mm -hmm. Is this, it's climate change, right? Yeah, pro climate pro probably, I don't yeah. know. It's bizarre, it's so sad, and I think for the economy, for all of the, I mean, yeah, and our host was telling us that you used to have part of the Winter Olympics and races and like big events, um, but now the season starts, it, it gets snowy too late here for that to happen. Oh gosh, I like, I don't know, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. let's not talk about snow. Yeah, uh, what I wanted to ask you was how you got into being a comedian. Oh, um, oh I, I've got bad reasons for going into being, a, well, it depends. Um, I wrote some sketches. The, we, our, our national TV station, the BBC, run lots of competitions all the time. And a long, long time ago, a lifetime ago, there was a, a, a competition called Finish This Sitcom, where they had the first 20 minutes of a TV show written, or first 10 minutes, and you wrote the last 20 minutes. And I entered that with a... Well, I was going to say with a friend, especially the father of my son. Um, and that led to writing some sketches. That led to writing some going to see sketches, doing some improvised comedy. And one of the people I was improvising with is a very famous comedian in the UK called Sarah Pascoe. She started doing stand-up. I thought she, I thought it, it looked fun. And I thought if I do stand-up, maybe I'll get more acting work, which is a bad motivation. And, and then so I, it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then ended up... Um, falling in love with stand-up and doing mainly that, really. But I still really love acting as well. Yeah. Did you, did you uh, take a course or workshops? I, I, um, I'm very lucky that I was living in London. I, did, I had a day jobs, but they, weren't, they were temporary office admin things that were, you know, I was physically there, but my mind didn't have to really be there. Um, and I was able, because I lived in London, to go out and do stand-up comedy every single night. I gigged a minimum of four nights a week, probably for about five or six years. And so you just put the stage time in, you need hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and I was able to do that. But it's still, it still is a long game. It still was um, over ten years before any, I got lots of writing work, but before being able to appear on any radio or television, that took just over a decade for me. How about you, Rose? Yeah, not too different actually I started doing comedy at university but sketch comedy so I was performing with a group of uh, my friends and we start yeah we performed some nights at university and then after university the summer after we graduated we went to the fringe in Edinburgh and performed and then the show went really well and we got an agent um, and so then I was like I guess I'm a comedian now but also I was a waitress and <laughs> and then and an actress. yes and an actress and so yeah I did sketch comedy so when Jess is talking about gigging for four or five nights a week I did that but for doing sketch comedy um, and then I always just, as soon as I started doing comedy, I was just, yeah, interested in stand-up. I just had a, an itch. I was like, I, I want to try and do that. Because, it's, I, because it terrified me. It scared me. Um, and so then, yeah, I, I just started doing it. I think the first gig I did was a, a different friend of mine. She had done this thing called the 30-Day Challenge, which is, she's really into, like, I don't know, like, all the kind of, Mo she's very motivated. She does all these things, you know. She's a doer, proactive. And she did this thing called 30 Day Challenge, which is, I think, where you pick something that really scares you that you really want to do, and you try and do it in 30 days' time. And hers, hers was st doing stand-up. And so she said, I'm putting on a stand-up gig. I'm going to do a stand-up gig. Do you want to come and do it? I'm doing this challenge. And I was like, yeah. So I did it, and I mean, let me tell you, it was the worst 10 minutes of stand-up <laughs> anybody has ever done, but there were some laughs, and so I was like, okay, this is great. And then, and then, yeah, I just kind of started. I was lucky because I had done sketch comedy. I knew people on the comedy circuit, so I could, I, 
you can I sort of skipped the open mic bit you you can get on like not paid gigs but you can get on like gigs because people tr trust you as a performer and then yeah I don't really do the sketch comedy anymore because we kind of all went off and did our different things and I just yeah still do still do stand up and yeah I didn't do a course or anything the best way to learn I think the best way to learn stand up is write it do it and edit it. it and watch it and watch yeah. lots and lots and lots of it live not just on tv if you can if you have the option to get out and watch live comedy bit improvised stand-up sketches go go if you can support it because also it's a completely different beast to things that are create like created to be filmed or to be recorded so yeah you, you yeah doing writing watching um we call this night an um, english night uh, because the stand-up is done in English, but it's not always that we host people from England. We've had Tanya Moore. Oh. Um, but I think that after her, we've had some people from Hungary. Cool. And then some Austrians. Apparently, there are these bubbles around the world where people do stand-up in English. Like yeah, there are. Yeah, yeah, like in Hungary, there is no Hungarian stand-up, but there's oh, a huge, oh, that's crazy, huge wow. English stand-up. I know stand -up. there's places like Berlin has a big yeah, English language yeah. comedy scene. It's crazy. We're so lucky as well as English people that we yeah. can do that and just go around the world and perform, and we don't need to speak any other languages. I mean, I'm also, I'm lucky, but I'm also deeply ashamed <laughs> that we don't know. Yeah. I've done, I've done stand-up in other European countries, and it hasn't been as lovely as this. Mm -hmm. It's been, t like, more cultural, like, disconnect, so that you're like, I actually don't feel like we've got anything in common. And actually, in places, perhaps, where they're more sensitive about... Um, you saying things you wouldn't be I wouldn't have been able to make a joke about the mountain because they actually are very proud of that mountain and they're not prepared to laugh about the mountain oh we're proud of our hill oh sorry the hill <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know what but we were we were we were laughing at you not being able to climb it yeah fine so you should be proud of your hill you should be proud of your lovely hill it's a massive hill really, really. the hills in England are not like that yeah, oh my god yeah, you can't. <laughs> you you cannot ski down a hill in yeah. England. I'm you telling try. you now. We try. When we get our one inch of snow in England in February, we all get sit on a tea tray and we go down every hill we can find. But our hills are actual hills. They're tiny. It's true. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks Hopefully, for we'll get to see you again. Uh, we are very happy that you've had a lovely time. Apparently, you're not very high maintenance. Oh, oh that's <laughs> really great! <laughs> I love to Damn hear it. that. We need to Damn up it. our game. We need to, yeah, we need to be we more demanding. Been asking for some. Actually, I'm, afraid I'm allergic that. to anything except champagne. Yeah. You oh, know, no. fake it until you make it. Yeah. Uh, you're never going oh, to be stars no. if you don't behave like one. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Note: um, Where are where is the bowl of M and M's, but only the blue ones? Because we did ask for that, and that hasn't been provided. <laughs> yeah, we don't import M and M's. But there's some other blue stuff I can provide <laughs> you. <laughs> Thank you, girls. Thanks, man. Thank you. Welcome again. And how long are you staying? We're going Just tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, so you, well. There, since you don't speak any other languages, there's no point in checking out our tomorrow's show. No, is it not? A fair? It's. Uh, I think it's in Serbian. Oh, yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. Be no, we don't even have one word in Serbian. You don't need to. I mean, you've learned like one, two, three words in Slovenian. Mm -hmm. We can basically say thank you. Uh -huh. Please come back next year because I want to check on you know how our Duolingo is going for yeah, Slovenian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We'll, have, we'll aim to have six words by then. <laughs> yeah, double. It's double. Yeah. Just don't remember the three that you've learned yeah. this year. And, you know, I'm a nice teacher. I'm a nice teacher. Thank you. Thank you.